Well, now that you're out of your costume, <laughs> you better put that back and people at home will go bananas. Huh? Now, you have to, you, you actually, you've been here. <laughs> You've done, uh, you're very athletic. I know you keep in shape and you work out and you did gymnastics for a long time and uh, you keep in shape. But still, that has to be very awkward because you actually well, have the knee and the uh, part of the leg into that. Um, well, what it is, mold. you have to be flexible. You, ha you know, you really, uh, for instance, you, you stand up. If you can do. I want to see if this. If you can do this much, you can do it. <laughs> you can't do it. I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> what do you have to do? Just take it and then. Yeah. See, it's not it only down. bending it. Up here, it's putting it there. <laughs> That's right. Easy. Do it easy. Do it easy, Kurt. Easy. 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 <laughs> I can get it up there. You... I never doubted that for a moment. <laughs> Come back here. Come back here. <laughs> you know you do stand up comedy. <laughs> no, Steve Rossi's looking for no, somebody. No, no, no. <laughs> Douglas and Rossi. Right. 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 oh, excuse me. I got it. Yeah, now you have to really yeah. turn it in oh. yeah. into the side, huh? But that's not bad. But that that's hurts. Not that bad. hurts. You could do half of it. Yeah. Is that really smart? Yeah. But it, it you it's yeah. uh, also, you know, I found that I have been doing that for almost about seven, eight months when I tried it today. Right. I found that I wasn't in shape because when we were shooting scalawag, I could just do it five, six minutes at a time. What am I doing? What happened to my shoe? <laughs> Pain, pain is so bad you don't feel that the shoe is gone anymore. No, I hope it's. A, I think that the premiere is tonight, and you're holding it for the Big Brothers organization. Yeah, Benefits we're having the, the premiere Scalawag to benefit the Big Brothers tonight at the Beverly Theater, and I think that they're a great charity. That is the organization, is it not? Where um, they take on a, uh, a child, another, a, a, That's another right. an adult. It's uh, male it's and... difficult because it's very time consuming. They deal on a one to one basis. It's like and a substitute is... father in a way. Exactly. Right. And in the picture, the reason they, they wanted to use Scalawag for that is we have that relationship between right. uh, Mark Lester and myself, so it suited their purposes, and I hope they do well because it's, yeah. a, it's a good charity. What's the very first motion picture you were ever in? Uh, Strange Love of Martha Ivers. Strange Love of Martha Ivers. That had to be yeah. almost 30 years ago? Oh, gosh, don't exaggerate. That was about 25 years ago. 25. Yeah. Well, the man said three As a matter decades. Of, in the Strange Love of Martha Ivers, I remember I never had cufflinks. It was the first time in my life that I wore cufflinks and I had to borrow someone's cufflinks because I had to be kind of mature and rather a rich guy. And I remember it was the first never time. Worn never worn cufflinks in your life? No. Were you pretty broke at that time when you made that picture? Uh, yeah, that's why I made it. I was going to be a big star on the stage and I was going to do a play and it, they didn't raise, get the money for it, so they couldn't get it up, so I came back and did, did, did. You're doing it again, sir. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing it again tonight. Right. <laughs> he really brings out something. Yeah, <laughs> just give you a look and you go, just like that. <laughs> have, you, have you ever made a picture you, you didn't really want to make? Oh, yeah. But you made it because you yeah, said, Yeah, hey, I, I, made, I, made I made one picture for nothing. I did a picture. I had a, uh, I had a picture year contract at Warner Brothers, and I wanted to get out of it. The only reason I took it, the only contract I've, I've had, and uh, I did the Young Man with a Horn, which I liked, because I lost right. my lip in that one. <laughs> I like and that picture. Uh, then I wanted to get out of the contract. They said, you can't get out, Kirk. It's a good contract, no option. I said, I'll get out because I'll do the next picture for nothing. So I did the, a picture for, nothing, for nothing. And it wasn't, and that's about what it was worth. It wasn't a very good picture, I thought. Yeah. A picture called Big Trees. And I did it for nothing to get out of a contract. And I've been, and I've always worked independently. I've had my own little company. And I like to try things. I like to do right kooky things like play characters on one leg or one eye or one ear. Well, the days are gone where the studio had all those people under contract now, and everybody's yeah. kind of doing things on their own, as you say. Yeah. Everybody does you. Every impressionist does Kirk Douglas, uh, which is flattering, of course, because you can only do people who are well-known. Uh, Gorshin now does uh, uh, almost a frightening impression of you. Well, Frank I think Gorshin. Gorshin does me better than I do. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he, he really... <laughs> No, he, he really, I think that, uh, I, I've often thought that sometimes, like when I was on a <coughs> personal appearance tour for the Big Brothers to promote Scalawag, I think I could send Frank Gorshin out and he'd do a better job. <laughs> yeah, good. I think it's uncanny. I, I'm fascinated by it because I've tried. Sometimes I look at him, you know, and I kind of go along with it. I can beat him. You know I can beat him. I can beat him. 
And you know, that's Frank not, not Ocean does good. it better. No, that's not, that's <laughs> out. Get out. <laughs> that's the lousiest impression I've ever heard in my life of you. Can I tell you about me? I, I said this on the show one night, but I'm <laughs> such a fan as of Jimmy Cagney, you know, who is retired now. And I met him some months ago, and I was really somewhat in awe because he, he doesn't, does not appear in public much. And Jack Webb had had a, a few people out, and he said, would you like to meet Jimmy Cagney? I said, of course. Well, I think a lot of actors would like to spend a little time with Cagney. And I walked up, and he was very nice, and he sat there. And he said, you know, when I can stay up, he said, I catch your show. He said, you know, you're very good. And I turned to him, and I says, not bad. I says, it needs a little more <laughs> when you... I didn't know what else to say. I was in awe trying on the self-defense. Yeah. I says, not bad. It needs a little more... You dirty rat. <laughs> would have been... What All right, you guys. Yeah. But you know, you, you happen to mention someone that is my idol. I yeah. remember a few years ago, my son Peter was much younger then, and he was watching television, and tears were coming down his cheeks. And I said, what's the matter? He said, Dad, who's Jimmy Cagney? Now, he had never seen him, and I said, why? He said, he's terrific. And what thrilled me was, because Jimmy Cagney happens to be one of my idols, I think he's one of the giants of, of motion pictures, was that my son had never heard of him, never seen him, and he was watching, and he knew that this was something special. Because yeah. I think that uh, that's, there are a few people that I think of that I have a kind of a feeling of awe, and you've named one, Jimmy Cagney. So, do you people feel that way? I think you really do. He's really kind of his own. He's really kind of his own person, and uh, he doesn't go for all the, the trappings now that go with it, and he's quite content to retire. And, and I've mentioned this on the air before, but he got up at Webb's one night, and, and Jack Webb is a great audio nut, you know. He's got all of the equipment and the, the tape machines, and he put on the soundtrack of um, the West Point story. And Jimmy got up and started to dance. And it was the strangest thing, because, you know, he did George M. Cohan, and he's a good hoofer. And he got up, and he's, I think he's 70 or 71 now, and he started to move, and it was like a guy Beautiful. doing Cagney. You know, mm. he was going, I'm a Yankee doodle dandy, and he was making, yeah. the, making yeah. the moves, and I said, not, not bad. Yeah. But it, it wasn't like he was really you doing know, it. they had a TV show where they asked me if I would call in, telephone in, and they had an, someone doing imitations on a phone backstage. They had three people on, and I talked on the phone, and the, the three people were supposed to say, is that Kirk Douglas, or is that someone doing an imitation? And when I went on the phone, two people said no. One person said yes. Two people didn't think I, now, I that was that would the be one. absolutely true. And you know what? That's probably right. The other fellow was probably doing a better imitation. That's because people get a certain sound yeah. in your mind, and because Frank takes it and embellishes a little bit, it makes it a little bit bigger than life. I've told this story some years ago. I had a call once when we were out here on the coast. No, I was staying at the Beverly Hills Hotel. I got a call, and the operator said, it's Jack Benny. Now, naturally, I take the call voice gets on and says, Johnny, I know you're just out here, you know, for a couple of weeks. <laughs> and if somebody, you know, falls out on the show, I'd be, you know, happy to come in. Now, I think it's Rich Little. So help me. I don't know why. You've seen him. Rich Little. Seen him? I'd seen Rich Little. In the lobby. In the lobby a couple of days before. And I said, it's a put on. And now I, I cool him. I really cool him. And I said, gee, that's swell, Jack. I, I don't think we'll have anybody drop out, but it's awfully nice. Now he gets apologetic because I've hurt his feelings. He said, no, I mean, you know, you don't have to have me on. But I meant if somebody falls out, I'll come in, you know. And I said, thank you very much. I didn't it. And I hung up the phone very abruptly. Now dissolved. Come into the office. Freddy de Cordova says, uh, did Irving Fine call you? Or Irving Fine had called Freddy de Cordova. Irving is Jack's manager, has been for years, and he says, is Johnny mad at Jack? Now, can you imagine? Jack at that time was 77 years old, and I grew up at, you know, revering Jack Benny. I said, what do you mean? And then it hit me. It was Jack Benny on the phone. <laughs> it was not Rich Little. And you don't know how dumb I felt realizing I'd said, thank you, I'll call you kid, and hung up the phone. <laughs> Isn't that awful? And, and Jack, and then we, we talked about it later on the show, and he thought I was actually being that abrupt with him. But you know, uh, this whole process of not only imitations, but kidding our stars, I think is, you know, that's indigenous only to uh, America. For example, uh, movie personalities or stage personalities <coughs> don't have that sense of humor about themselves uh, out of this country. I think it's only here where you can kid someone 
and they I never thought of and that. they take it. But you, you find they don't do that in France. I mean, France a star is a very serious thing, or you know, in, in any in any field. Right. But here we, uh, it's it's a, I think it's an American quality that I think is, is is terrific to be able to laugh at yourself. Yeah, I never thought of that before. Yeah. Let me take a quick break here, and we will come right back after this word from General Foods. <laughs> 